What's up Wargamers, Luke from Basilisk Wargaming here, thanks for tuning in to another video. Today we're going to be making some fur, pelts and capes for our Emperor's Spears kill team. Um, we're going to be using Millie Putt or Green Stuff or whatever modelling putty you want to use and just three basic tools. We've got tons to cover, so let's get cracking, roll that intro. Okay, so the kit you're going to need for this is a sharp metal tool, uh, some toothpicks, a blade of some sort, some actual milli putt or green stuff, a model, of course, some water, and a whole bunch of really expensive sculpting tools. No, not really, guys. You don't need those. Don't go out and buy them. Okay, so in this video, I'm using green stuff, so the first thing I'm going to do is roughly estimate how much I'll need and just make sure it's really well mixed. So I'm sculpting onto this Assault Intercessor, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have a look at the model and just understand his pose and what he's doing and roughly the direction that that fur is going to go. So I'm probably going to lay it in just behind his backpack here and just trail it underneath this vent. Obviously he's running forward with his right hand drawn back and I don't think there'll be much on this left hand shoulder guard. So when you're working with green stuff, you just need to make sure that your working surface and also the tools that you're using are damp or, you know, wet, leave it. Um, that stops the green stuff actually sticking to you or the surfaces and make sure it only sticks to the model or where you want it to stick. So I'm just going to lay out a small piece. I'm just going to roll it out just into a small sausage shape. Um, and this is just going to start to get the basic area of where we want that fur to be. So I'm just going to lay it on the model roughly where I want it to be, so round about there. Um, and I'm going to start to just press that into position just using my toothpick just to secure it against the model. So at this stage in the process I'm not worrying too much about texture or you know any of that fine detail. I'm really just getting the shape and the form of the piece of fur that I want. So in my head I've kind of got an image of where I want to go and I'm just trying to move that green stuff and make sure I build up the right area so that it's got the right volume that I need. Um, so you can see here that I've decided that it needs some more volume on the back piece just underneath where the vent is so I'm going to roll out another small sausage and I'm just going to lay that onto there um, and again press that in with a toothpick just to fix it to the model. So like I said, don't worry about texture, don't worry about form, just make sure that you've got that shape, that kind of volume that you want and then we can start to work on the detail. So as I mentioned when you're working with green stuff just keep wetting the tool that you're using, it'll stop the green stuff sticking to the, uh, the toothpick especially because it's wood. Um, you can use a little pot of water or a wet sponge or whatever you prefer. So this is the first stage of starting to put some detail onto the model as far as the fur is concerned. So I'm going to use this sharp metal tool and I'm just kind of going to get an idea of where I want the fur to come from. So this, this is going to be my center line. Half of it's going to grow this way and half it's going to grow the other way. Very similar to the hair on your head. So I'm just going to start to use the tool and just press in some small little flat triangles uh, using the tool at quite a flat angle. And I'm basically going to work from the bottom of the fur, so the, the opposite end of the grain. I'm going to work back towards what I would sort of imagine the hairline to be, which is just underneath this vent here. So you can see I'm not scratching it, I'm not, you know, I'm just literally pressing in, it's not digging into the green stuff, I'm just pressing flat, so you're making that small pointed triangular shape. I'm then going to come back in with the toothpick and I'm just going to basically push the green stuff out of this area around his gorget, around his collar armour, because I don't want it to impede his head movement, I want to make sure I could, you know, I've got enough room for his head and his helmet in there. Um, and again, from the other end, I'm going to do the same process. So I'm starting from the opposite end of the grain, and I'm just slowly working back up towards that, let's call it a hairline for the sake of this example. So now we've got our base texture. Uh, we're just coming in and just filling in a few areas that are still smooth. It's going to be quite orderly where you've come in with that metal tool. So now we're going to bring the toothpick in, which has a wider surface area. And the objective here is to break up the fur. So obviously fur is, is ordered, there is an order to it, it does have a grain, but you it's not like something like chainmail or metal armor, which is going to be completely uniform. So you're coming in and you're basically breaking up that pattern that you've created with the metal tool. It can be a bit random, but obviously you need to keep with the grain, so make sure that your tool is facing in the direction that you, you want the fur to flow in. Um, and obviously continuously wet that tool, otherwise the green stuff is going to stick there. Um, you can see that I was just pressing the green stuff back up out of the helmet area away from his collar, um, just to kind of keep it under control, because obviously as you're applying pressure here with the toothpick, sometimes it can move to some areas you don't want it to be. Um, so again, I'm just working to that hairline, you know, that imaginary line we've created, and just making sure that the, the flow is in, in the same direction. Um, I'm comparing it to another model here because I want to make sure the unit looks like they've got furs from similar animals, but obviously they're not going to be exactly the same furs. 
Um, so what I've done now is I've created a good texture and a good base, but I want to build some more volume. There's a couple of areas which I think look a bit, a bit sparse. So I'm just coming in with another sausage piece of green stuff and I'm just basically layering that over what we've already done and now I'm going to start the process again with the metal tool and just bond that into uh, our imaginary hairline. So again same process as we did before we're just doing those little rows of those nips with the tool and um, so we're just keeping it nice and flat and just basically doing some not orderly rows but relatively sort of randomized rows um, to get that base base texture. So coming back in with the toothpick now, we're going to break up those base textures we've created with the metal tool um, and just to make it look a little less orderly. Something I like to do is just keep looking around the model, make sure you're spinning the model around looking at it to understand where you need to add some extra areas. Sometimes you get a bit bogged down and you sculpt one area for a whole bunch of time and then you look back and think actually, you know, this doesn't really now match to the rest of the model. Okay, so it's secret weapon time. We're now going to make this fur really pop like I have here on this previous model. So the edge of the fur we've broken up with these small what I call fingers, you can also call them wisps. Um, it's where the edge of the fur is basically not forming a straight line. You can see here I've got a straight line on this shoulder pad which doesn't look very fur like. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in with the toothpick and we're going to apply pressure onto the green stuff to push down to raw plastic. And we're going to make this sort of forward backwards sawing motion and that's pretty much going to clear the green stuff from that area and leave us with these little fingers or these little wisps of fur. Now this is where you can really start to have fun with it, you see a little piece of green stuff has come off there so I've just pulled him away, make sure you keep the tool wet. Um, you can now start to really make some motion, so for example you can see this finger here, I'm going to curl that round as if the wind's sort of blowing it round on his shoulder pad and this is the technique that really starts to take your fur from you know 80%, yeah it kind of looks like fur to bam, that's definitely fur, 100%. So this is the part where you're just going to push in those edges, you're going to use that sawing technique as you can see here, and you're just going to create these little wisps on the edge. It works really great on shoulder guards, on elbows, and also later on you'll see that I do it on the top of the pack. I think the main thing to remember is that fur is quite organic and it has quite a nice flow to it, so try not to get too hung up about making everything the same. Stuff's going to look real different, you know, uh, natural fur is, is very different textures all over. So I'm coming in and just putting all these wisps in and I'm just making sure that some are going left, some are straight, some are curling round on themselves, just to give them a nice texture. Okay, so I'm happy where this model is going. Um, but I've decided that actually I want some more fur to be pushing up onto the back of that generator pack. So again I've rolled out a little fat sausage and I'm just going to place that into where I roughly want it to connect to the fur. Um, so I'm going to use my metal tool to press this in now to just connect it to the rest of the green stuff that we've already worked on. Um, just a note here, make sure that you're being careful where you're putting your fingers because the number of times I've sculpted a cape and thought yeah that's awesome, I'm loving that. And the next thing you know, I put my thumb in it, ruined all my work. So just make sure you're aware of what's going on. Um, so I'm following the grain here. I've basically pushed in the green stuff into our imaginary hairline that we created earlier. And I'm now basically pulling it back over that uh, pack. And I'm then using that technique again to just come in with the metal tool and create that initial grain before I then come back with the toothpick to then break it up. So I'm paying particular attention to where the new green stuff has met the old green stuff and I'm just making sure that I'm using my toothpick and my metal tool to press those two together so those pieces are now bonded. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm now coming back just to break up that uniform texture we made with the metal tool um, and I'm going to start to then put some wisps in as if it's really you know, ripping back over the back of that pack. So again, same technique as before, pushing down until you meet plastic and just making that backwards forward sawing motion. And then we're just going to tease that wisp out and just sort of curl him around, give him some movement. Um, remember, you're trying to create motion here in the fur, so you're imagining, you know, if this marine's running forward, how would that fur react? Obviously, it would move in a, in a set direction, it would have a flow. So this is one thing to watch out for. Well, I've got this quite hard edge here, which doesn't really look very fur-like at all. So again, I'm just going to push down and I'm going to make that sawing motion and load in some of these little wisps and just break the edge up so it looks more like natural fur. So 
As I mentioned before, just give the model a spin and make sure all the sculpt matches all over. I'm just reinforcing that hairline a bit. And if you're doing a model sub-assemble, just make sure that you've got good clearance. So I'm going to keep pressing that back um, out of his neck armor, his gorget area, to make sure I can get that helmet in after I'm done. I'm just going to refer back to his squad mates just to make sure they've all got that matching Nemerton swag. And that's it guys, that's our easy fur tutorial using just three tools. If you found the video useful, please hit the like and subscribe button, it will really help us grow our channel. Thanks very much guys and I'll see you on the next one. Ave Imperator.